Thailand. Always high on my list of places to go, but for one reason or another, I just couldn't get there. Until early this winter, when I packed my Leicas and my Rolly Flex with a big bag full of black and white film and headed to this colorful country. After three flights and almost 22 hours in the air, we landed in Bangkok, home to 11 million people. Amid the chaos of cars, motorcycles, people, tons of people that all seemed to make the city streets work in harmony, we were off to discover some of the more than 35,000 temples in the country. My wife couldn't understand it either when I said I was going to use mostly black and white film for this trip. My answer was simple. Millions of color photos are taken every month in this country. I wanted to try to do something a little different. I wanted to try to capture the feeling and the mood of the place and not be distracted by the color. So my main camera was going to be my light, square format Rolleiflex 3.5F. The temples in Bangkok are simply jaw-droppingly beautiful. Amid the heat and humidity of the day, we walked endless steps discovering life on the streets and the beauty of the Golden Buddhas. We also discovered Photo Club, where you can get film, film developed, books, scans, and they also run workshops in Bangkok. Super cool place, go check it out. For this trip, I brought my own stash of film, mostly Ilford HP5+, Ilford FP4+, and a little box of Kodak T-Max 400. I also brought my M10 Leica to use for color work. In our Thailand research, we discovered that the bridge on the River Kwai was just two hours west of Bangkok in the small town of Kanchanaburi. I've seen that epic 1957 war movie about 25 times, and it was a place that I didn't want to pass up. In short, British POWs are forced to build a railway bridge across the River Kwai in World War II by their Japanese captors. Our first stop was a small museum just outside of town where you had to go down in the caves where prisoners of war were held. Now, the caves are filled with statues of Buddha and bats. Yes, live bats hanging from the ceiling. It was definitely a strange place to visit. We then went on to visit the bridge close to our hotel. Unlike the wooden bridge in the movie, the bridge is made out of steel and still carries freight and passengers today. As you walk over the bridge, train whistles happen behind you to let you know the train is coming and you stand on little platforms on the edge of the bridge as the train passes. Not sure this would fly in North America.
I also traveled with my little Ravini Labs light meter that worked flawlessly during this trip. It weighs practically nothing, fits in my small bag, and was very accurate. Often I will take a meter reading in the full sun and then into the sun, and then I know my exposure is walking around for the next half hour. Next to the bridge is a quirky museum dedicated to the making of the bridge. It has all kinds of artifacts in it, some not making any sense, as they are from after the war, but interesting all the same. Our last stop was the War Cemetery in Kanchanaburi. It was good to see that it was well looked after. It's incredibly sad to see all the names of soldiers there, mostly in their early 20s. An hour north of Kanchanaburi sits Arawen National Park. People come here for the waterfalls. There's a 1500 meter waterfall in seven tiers, all safe for swimming and cooling off from the heat of the hike. Photographically, it's a challenge. You are under the canopy of the forest. And if the water is in the sunlight, there could be a 15 stop range of light from the highlights to the shadow. So you have to search for places that are more evenly lit. This is the place to come early or later in the day, making it easier to take photos. But every step of the waterfalls provides you with new photographic opportunities. This is the one time I carried around my little small lightweight travel tripod and it was a must for some images. From there, we traveled north to the northern city of Chiang Mai. Everything just seems calmer in this ancient city. Home to hundreds of temples, we spent our days walking in the old part of the city. We had some of the best coffee ever in the cafes. And the night market and food stalls are the business there. We ate great, all for under $10 for dinner for both of us. Photographically, this is really a wonderful place to explore Buddhist temples. We never ran into huge crowds and everywhere the locals were warm and friendly. Photography is welcome at the temples, but there's a wonderful sign outside saying, be modest with your picture taking. I felt the Roliflex was the perfect tool to follow that. The more I roamed around, the more I left the Leica back at the hotel and just used the roller. I've always liked that square format and the temples and their order seem to fit the format perfect. My only issue was I started thinking about if I was going to run out of film or not. I met a young guy at a night market selling film cameras and he had a photo store in the city. So I bought more black and white film from him. The film market in Thailand is alive and well.
One of the things I do all the time uh, when I'm on the road going through rolls is I will uh, double check just to make sure my shutter is always firing because you hate to go somewhere, shoot a bunch of rolls and find out that your shutter wasn't firing. So I'll always check that in between a couple rolls and make sure everything is still working. The one temple that should be a must on everyone's list in Chiang Mai is Wat Pra That Doi Suthup. And I know I said that name wrong. Three hundred and sixty steps. It's just outside the city, founded in the thirteen hundreds, and tells the story of Buddhism. I met these young monks at sunset at the Wat and photographed them. With most of my travel photography, I do meet people before I photograph them and ask to take their photo, or there's some kind of communication between us and they know I'm taking their photo. Now with Translate app on my phone, communicating is even easier. The young monk I photographed then wanted to get his photograph taken with me, which I gladly did. The great thing about traveling a country with a camera is it allows you to discover people and places you might not have explored simply because you wanted to take a photo of a landscape or a person. For me, the camera has been a tool to understand the world better, to appreciate different cultures, to see how other people live. It has allowed me to meet an extraordinary amount of great people. We then went down south to the Phuket area. The one thing I love about traveling and just using one camera is you really get into the groove of using that camera and seeing a certain way. Now I'm seeing in square and now I'm seeing in black and white. And it's so much more intuitive and quicker to take photos that way. It's really important when you go on a trip to take photos just one way and things start happening a lot easier for you. And I found that was happening now down south. After a few days on the beach, we went to Phuket and stayed in the old town. I love going through film in my hotel room. When I'm on the road, I make little notes of what I've shot on the rolls of film, and I organize my film in terms of place and how it's gonna get developed, and it has a really calming effect. It's so much better than staring at a computer screen. During this trip, I went through nine airports and my film didn't get x-rayed once. I take all my film out of the cassettes or containers, out of the boxes, I put them all in a see-through bag and I make it really easy on the people doing security. 
I hand them the bag of film. Everybody hand checks it. It was never a problem the entire trip. We love Phuket in the old town. It really felt like a college town. There's great places to eat, amazing coffee shops, and cool architecture. I did the nicest portrait of my trip here of a bride taking a break during her wedding. The islands were busy, really busy. I ended up not taking any photos with the Roly. I just sat back and enjoyed the sun and some Thai beers. I got this one Leica shot that was a little interesting through the window of a ferry as we were traveling, but really I didn't shoot hardly anything on the islands. Up north of the islands in Krabi, there was a longboat festival happening with over 400 longboats. This was a traditional local festival and not for the tourists. It was great to be part of this as all the longboat captains were on the beach, all the colorful boats were parked on the beach, you know, they had local dancing and it was a true real festival uh, for local people and you really get a sense of how the locals were living down there. This is the one portrait that I really love. I connected with this woman involved in the Longboat Festival and she posed for me on the beach. And I love the look that she's given me standing there and the boats in the background. It was one of my favorite portraits of the trip. One of the great things about Krabby is the night market and the food. The food is off the hook good. It's amazing, it's cheap, it's plentiful. Just so much good fresh food that you can eat at the night market. From Krabi, we went back up north to the ancient city of Eatheia. It's a photographic wonderland. There's so much to photograph. It's an ancient city with buildings from the 1400s. There's the famous face in the tree. You can easily spend the day here at this ancient city wandering the sights with your camera. There's so much to see and photograph. And then someone got a new Leica camera bag in Bangkok at a place I'll show you in a second.
For our final days, we went back to Bangkok. If you're a photographer, the one mall you have to go to is the Mega Plaza Safan Lek, but leave your credit card at home. There is everything film related there. Leicas of all kinds, great M lenses, Nikons, Canons, Pentaxes, camera bags, medium format, large format. I did not want to leave. I could have spent some serious dough there. On our last night, we hit Chinatown at sunset as the streets lit up. All the vendors were set up, the food stalls were set up, the smells were all amazing. We ate dinner on the street with two beers for $8. Crazy. It's easy to see why Bangkok is the second most visited city in the world. So much to see and do, so many things to photograph. In all, I shot 45 rolls of film and developed it all in Rodinal, which took three days to develop and make contact sheets and scans. What kind of wife says yes to going to a country for a month and filming me do a YouTube video? Well, a great one. And I have an amazing wife who filmed most of this. I could not have done this without her. We were in Thailand for 30 days. And in all that time, we had one bad day the last day. The day we were going home, we both looked at each other and asked why are we leaving. The people of Thailand are kind, friendly, warm and wonderful. It's a photographic wonderland. We're definitely going back. <laughs>